Hey guys, I'm back with another thrift flip, or like my mom calls it, destroying my clothes. So the lucky winner today, or the unlucky victim today, is... Although this sweatshirt does give me serious Mrs. Trenchable vibes, I do like it. But to be quite frank, items like this are easy to come by at the thrift. I know that I have like a solid 98% chance of spotting this at Value Village again. But you know what I probably won't spot? A Nike corset top. How cute would a Nike corset be? I've been really into the Vivian Westwood corsets. I just love the shape. The silhouette. So I'm gonna try to mimic something like that on this. I'm gonna start by cutting the sweatshirt apart so that we can see how much fabric we're working with. All I did was cut the sweatshirt straight across the shoulders and also straight down the sides. I had to cut off the stretchy waistband thing, but I'm gonna save it to make the straps. The Vivian Westwood corset tops have a very distinct triangular shape in the front, which is kind of the most important thing to me when trying to achieve that look. I grabbed some paper and I drew out a triangular... You know what, I just tried to copy the shape on the picture to the best of my ability. Once I was satisfied, I cut that shape out, but I folded it in half first for symmetry. Before moving forward, I had to make sure that it was the right size for my body. I'm just placing the cutout on top of the fabric and making sure that the Nike symbol is where I want it to be. I pin them together and I use my fabric chalk to trace out the shape while leaving an inch for seam allowance. Then I cut that out and went on to figuring out what I would do for the back piece. I was pretty lost at this point, but I just used the front piece to help guide me when drawing the back piece, if that makes sense. And this is what I came up with. Okay, now that I figured out the shape, I just copied the same exact steps that I did on the other piece. Just pin it down on the fabric, trace it out with one inch of seam allowance, and cut it out. Okay, back to the front of the top. We still need to add two small side pieces to complete the front. To make sure that the curves of the side pieces match the curve of the middle piece, I took the paper that I used to create the back piece and put the front piece on top of it and traced the curve out on the side. Once I was finished, I cut that piece out and I used that slice to create the two side bits that we need. Here I'm just trying to match that piece up with the bottom and I want it to be more of a diagonal cut than a straight one so I'm drawing a diagonal line. Once I was happy with the shape of the slice, I pinned it to another piece of fabric right sides together and I cut it out to duplicate it. And this is what we have so far. What I'm going to do is just take the front and back fabric and trace out the exact same piece but on different fabric so that I have a way to add the boning somehow because otherwise it would just be like a regular top, not a corset top, so. But because of quarantine, fabric is kind of hard to come by, so I have to use something that I already have. And I think I'm gonna use the shirt that I was wearing in the beginning. So I'm gonna use this long sleeve shirt. It's honestly nothing special. I don't even think it's mine. Okay, so here I'm just doing the same thing, but with new fabric. I'm pinning that piece down that I have and I'm cutting out the same exact shape to create two layers. Oh, and this time I made sure that I placed the right side of the Nike fabric face down. For the straps, I'm cutting both the waistband pieces in half vertically so that they each have two layers. Okay, stay with me here. Now I'm connecting the top layer of the straps with the top layer of the top and the bottom layer of the straps with the bottom layer of the top. And I'm doing these all right sides together. My goal is to be able to flip the whole thing inside out or technically right side out. Let's do this. The first thing I'm doing is connecting the strips to the shirt. And I'm doing this with a zigzag stitch and I'm going over it a couple of times.
So this is what we have so far. The straps are basically connected. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over the perimeter. This is what I mean by going over the perimeter. The red represents where I'm stitching. I'm leaving the bottom and the top parts of the straps open so that I can flip it over. This is the face of concentration. Now I flipped the whole thing over and it was hard to do the strap, so I used my loop turner to help me out. Oh my god, it's so cute! To connect the side pieces to the middle, I placed the side piece on the middle piece right sides together and I sewed along the curve. So this is what the front looks like. Um, yeah, it's almost done. I just need to add the boning. But now I'm just going to do the same to the back piece. Now I'm using my fabric chalk. This is just to help me understand how much boning I need and where I'm putting all of them. So for the boning, I have these zip ties. I hope I have enough. So I managed to get two zip ties in the shirt before... I ran out of thread. I have more thread obviously, but I don't have any more black thread and I feel like if I switch the color on the front, then it'll be too obvious. I have more black thread, like what kind of sewer am I? I'm just gonna sew the back piece and the front piece together. I'm gonna do that with brown thread, like I don't really care. It's not gonna show anyway. To connect the back to the front, I place them together, right sides together. Everything is right sides together in sewing, okay? I lined up the sides and pinned them down. Then I just sewed straight down each side. So this is what it looks like. I haven't connected the straps yet. It's like 10 o'clock right now. Turns out that my mom actually has tons of black thread so I can finish the corset now. And I really wanna finish it before tomorrow because I have work and I think I wanna wear it to work tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Okay, look, so because the middle panel has such a narrow opening at the bottom, I have to start putting in the bonings from the sides first and then do the middle last. Do you feel me, man? I also stitched a slight curved line at the top of the middle panel. Sorry for not showing that. To add the boning into the shirt, I followed the line with a straight stitch. I used that stitch to determine how long the zip tie should be, and then I marked it and then cut it. I filed down the rough edges of the zip tie so that it doesn't cut through my fabric and then impale me. Then I took that zip tie, shoved it into the shirt, and made sure that it was like against that stitch that I made. Then I took it to my sewing machine and sewed another straight line right against the zip tie. Be sure not to sew onto the zip tie because the needle will break and fly into your mom's eye. I've put all the um, zip ties in it already. Um, it started off great and then it got kind of crazy over here, but I still feel like it looks really good. And I just pinned the bottom and I'm about to hem it. Hemming the top was going great until it wasn't anymore. Yeah, I broke the needle. but we still got it done, yay. Shout out to my mom for helping me figure out how long the straps needed to be. This is what I did to attach the straps to the back. I don't know, it worked though. And finally, I was done just in time for work.